Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of our witnesses for being here today. Uh, Mr. Jaffer, as a former staffer to a former staffer, welcome. We continue to be reminded of the national security and economic implications of the Chinese Communist Party and the threat that they pose both to our country and to our future. Time and time again, the CCP has shown that they are not willing to play by the rules that govern international commerce. They have aided and abetted Iran, evading US sanctions, and are actively stealing US technology and intellectual property across whole sectors of our economy, from artificial intelligence, to computing, to robotics, to biology, and beyond. In fact, the FBI's economic espionage caseload related to China has increased approximately 1,300% over the last decade. Today, on average, a China-related counterintelligence investigation is opened every 10 hours. The stakes could not be higher. We must act now to mitigate the ongoing economic harm happening to hardworking American families, Main Street small businesses, budding entrepreneurs, and critical industries. To that point, we must stop the CCP from buying U.S. land. Uh, Not only is this impacting the availability of fertile farmland for our agriculture community, but the CCP has deliberately compromised national security by purchasing land near our military installations. That's why I'm proud to have joined Senator Tom Cotton in introducing the Not One More Inch or Acre Act, and I continue to earn my colleagues to join this effort. The U.S has also um, looking at existing tools that protect our national security and safeguarding technology innovation happening on college campuses and research and development labs and facilities across the nation. We've taken a look and we're looking at what the CCP is trying to do to undermine those things. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, in addition to export controls, classifications, and security clearances and sanctions, all contribute to the firewall protecting American innovation, American IP, and American research from the Chinese Communist Party and other nefarious actors. Mr. Joffrey, I'd like to ask you, where are the gaps in our current toolbox, and how do we ensure that U.S. security capabilities are able to keep up with evolving tactics by... and technologies that are being deployed by the Chinese Communist Party to steal our cutting edge, our cutting edge, our groundbreaking technology, um, the research and innovation that's happening here in the U.S. Well, Senator Brett, I think there's a few things we could do to help staunch staunch the flow of of U.S. intellectual property out the back door. Mm -hmm. One, we've got to deter effectively the Chinese. That means taking the fight to them. Right? We have allowed the NSA and our, and our cyber command to get more aggressive and to lean forward, to defend forward in adversary networks. More needs to be done there. We need broader authorities to allow our government to push back more aggressively. We need to take the policy decisions to actually push back against Chinese depredation and the, and the efforts that, the, that other nation state actors like the Iranians and Russia are doing on our networks as well. Second, we also need to ensure uh, that we have the policies and procedures in place that allow us to effectively push back economically against the Chinese. Mm-hmm. Today, we use tools like the SDN list, the entities list. These are not tools that are designed for the kind of economic depredation they engage in, we have either a sledgehammer on one side or a scalpel on the other. Neither works, we need a butcher knife. That requires action by Congress to give uh, the administration more tools, and then the administration needs to use those tools and use them effectively. Simply designating a group like the Houthis as especially designated global terrorist and not using the FTO designation is a mistake. Couldn't agree more. Exactly, and so, so, so we need to be more aggressive, and it's not just in capabilities and tools, we have to use them more aggressively. We've gotten too used to only use economic tools, they're not as effective as they could be. We need to get more aggressive in that front as well. Listen, wh- while we're talking, I know I only have a l- less than a minute. I, I want to talk a little bit, transition a little bit to, into BRICS. And when I am looking at what I am, I am seeing, obviously, um, we've had four more countries. We saw four more countries join um, earlier this month. Over 40 countries have expressed interest in joining BRICS, and 22 of them have formally requested membership. I, I think this is startling and concerning, and I think America, we need to wait up. And I think we need to um, demand that people withdraw from BRICS. And and my my question to you is, in your opinion, has the U.S. adequately examined the consequences and economic concerns and potential national security implications of BRICS? And what more do we need to be doing um, to push back on this? We have not done nearly enough. And the reality is that we are in something of a Cold War today with China, right? 
We have to view the Chinese effort to consolidate its influence and authority over nations in our own hemisphere, as well as in Africa and around the globe, as a strategic threat to our ability to continue to lead the world. And that comes from us being a strong adversary to our foes and a strong ally to our friends. Nobody trusts the United States today. They don't trust that we're going to be there. They saw what we did to our allies with the Kurds under the prior administration. They saw what we did to our allies in Afghanistan under the current administration. They have seen it over and over again. They see our adversaries punch at us with Iran, with China, with Russia, and they see us take those punches and do little to confront them. Until we demonstrate that we are prepared to lead and be a good ally to our friends and a real adversary to our foes, nobody's going to come alongside us. BRICS will continue to grow. China will continue to gain influence. And countries in our own hemisphere will switch their recognition from Taiwan to China has happened twice in the last six months. Yep. Uh, it's a huge thanks, strategic son. threat. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks,